This is a, a lesson that we're going to be integrating literature and math. Um, we could use this either in grade one or grade two. And the focus that we're going to talk about is partitioning numbers. And partitioning means breaking numbers apart. So in kindergarten, one of the outcomes is for the students to know how to represent numbers up to 10. So the book that I'm taking is called The Tub People. And we are going to read a couple of pages. Now, we could uh, integrate this as well for health. Um, just a, a brief summary of what the book is all about is we have a, a group of people that um, sit on the edge of the tub and go for little rides on the soap when no one's watching. And towards the middle of the book, the little boy gets on the soap and falls off and goes down the drain. So you could also do it as um, something connected with safety, what happens when you get separated from an adult. But we're going to leave that part. We're going to just do the partitioning numbers. So I'm going to read a couple of pages. The tub people stood in a line all day on the edge of the bathtub. There were seven of them, and they always stood in the same order. The father, the mother, the grandmother, the doctor, the policeman, the child, and the dog. They were all made out of wood, and their faces were very plain. They could smile or frown, or cry or laugh. And sometimes they would wink at each other, but it hardly showed. The father of the tub people liked to play sea captain. He would take the mother, the grandmother, and the child for a ride on the floating soap, and the others stood at the edge of the tub and waved. Once in a while, the child of the tub people would slide off the soap into the warm bath. Help! Help! And the captain would rescue him. We're coming! We're coming! And the policeman and the doctor liked to have water races bobbing from one end of the tub to the other, and the child would always cheer. The grandmother would say, Hush! You're very noisy. When bath time was over, the tub people always lined up along the edge of the, the bathtub. The father, the mother, the grandmother, the doctor, the policeman, the child, and the dog. Okay, so that's going to put the framework of what we're going to do next. Okay, we're going to make a storyboard. And you can get your students to make this. teacher doesn't have to have this prepared. What we're looking for is a bathtub. And in that bathtub is going to be our bar of soap. Okay? And you can be asking the children how many people were there? And there were seven. So we're going to line our people up on the edge of the bathtub. Now you could use buttons, you can use counters, you could use linking cubes. I just happen to have little robots. Oops. So we're going to use the actual people. So you can be saying to the, the students, so how many people do we see? And they're going to count them to get seven. Now, your next question is, oops, put some of them on the soap. Okay, so then they have an arrangement. Would they all have the same? No. And that's good. That gives you um, lots of direction to go in. So if I put three on the side and four on the outside, or four, pardon me, three on the soap and four on the outside of the tub, do I still have seven? If I have two on the soap and five on the outside, do I still have seven? They need to be able to trust the count. Do I change my ending number when I move them around? Can I break apart these numbers and still have seven? So this is what a model would look like. Now, we could also have this as the students acting it out. We could have seven students. You could have a mat, for example, as the bar of soap, or you could get creative. But we're making a model with, with the kids. Okay? Now... I can also make a model that's symbolic. Okay, I can say 
Okay, here are my four people standing on here, let's get back. Standing on the outside of the tub. And here are my three people on the bar of soap. And you could get to them to circle one if you like. How many do I have here? Do I still have seven? Okay. I could have them show me with a bingo dabber. Here are the four on the outside of the tub. Here are the three on the bar of soap. So now we've taken it into the pictorial. We want a picture. What does it look like? This is the concrete. Now we have a picture. Now with some teacher help, we can take that and start putting it into numbers. Okay, how can we show it? I might just say I have four and I have three like that. We might have some students that are ready to say that's the same as four and three or four plus three. Okay, so the teacher might even put the word plus in there or the word and in there. Now, there may be some that want to put pictures. Supposing here's the tub and they might put four. Here's the bar of soap and beside that they're going to put three. But they're starting to put numbers into what it actually looks like in my model. So, we've gone through the three stages of how I can break numbers apart and still come up with the same total that I started with.